Cartels love her. Ed Calderon reveals how Mexico's new president will strengthen the rug cartels. Mexico just went through an election. They elected the first female Jewish uh, leftist party candidate, uh, not getting a lot of attention actually in the international press, which is surprising, but uh, yeah. especially downplaying the fact that out of 20,000 candidates running for federal state local office we have on record at least 137 assassinations she 137 assassinations of local people running for for office all kind of different offices 100 uh, imagine if we had on this side 137 aspiring politicians getting murked that's crazy there's graduation parties of american kids taking keg stands and puking on donkeys in Cabo. And, and then in the yeah. interior, you have, you have Political you know, third world type uh, behavior. So, uh, which again is what makes Mexico just the wildest country on earth. But uh, you really have to be somebody that wants good, somebody that wants change somebody that's looking for rev revolution to even consider running for office in mexico these people are martyring themselves what do you think the psychology is do you think the psychology is hey man maybe i won't be the one unalived maybe i won't be the one assassinated or maybe i get getting good with the cartel if i'm a politician i don't see that because i'm seeing politicians getting murked left and right if you number 137 and you've seen 136 of these dudes get assassinated. What is the incentive for you to run for office? It's almost a certain demise. It's crazy. So those people aren't spoken enough for because that's balls. Is it, Am I wrong? Y'all tell me in the chat if I'm wrong. To me, that seems like big nuts. I want change. I'm going to run for office. I'm going to try to be the change. But they might take you out so and what obviously you know you take it from there do you think sure wh where is this coming I, I, from and I why mean, again uh we are we just lived through one of the most violent presidencies in history um we've had several <laughs> the felipe calderon administration which i was which where i got most of my experience uh started off a war with the cartels that uh divulged de-evolved into this just plus of a thing um, this current president, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, is part of a leftist movement, a uh, very populist guy. Um, think uh, Donald Trump uh, merged with uh, Maduro. That's mm. that's Lopez Obrador, um, uh, a guy who is a very is a populist. Um, Claudia Chainbaum is a political candidate that has they basically grew up around him. Oh, um, so, so she's very much too. a member of that cult. Ah, so so in other words, she's like the president that don't hear the people demanding information, the media demanding information on those five young men that were snatched and unalived by the cartel. He he couldn't hear them when they was calling for nothing, and she's part of his cult, so evidently she deaf too. She don't hear shit either. This past uh, political cycle, we had, I, I mean, I've heard, 30 official over 30 official political candidates were assassinated during these election the, the election cycle right as well as some actual politicians already in office uh, after some of the events uh, uh that took place during the elections um it's it's a free-for-all um so it's it's you you basically you've lost control there's you don't have control of the situation anymore nobody does the cartel seems to have control of the situation cartels have politicized deeply and some of them are betting their livelihoods and their organization's influence within the political uh, organizations that they are now funding um we see a morena party that is probably on the side of the sinaloa cartel or some factions of the sinaloa uh, sinaloa confederation uh, we saw a president that visited bandira Huata, the bir the birthplace of el chapa guzman like six times during his presidency like he's the president that visited that forgotten place the most so there's obviously some sort of relationship there um what what i see is mexico going through very much uh, uh 
very much the same heading it's been on for the past few years uh, with the current president. Uh, hands-off approach as far as cartels go. Um, abrazo no balazos is the policy. And saying that nothing is wrong is probably kind of like the main directive that the current government has. Mm -hmm. Let's say there's somebody in Mexico looking at me right now, watching me. Are they saying I'm overreacting and that it's not that bad in Mexico? Or are they saying we're under siege and we're oppressed, Papa, and shit done changed? You know what I'm saying? The government don't got our back. The government and cartels are the same thing. It's every man for himself. Like, where, where do they, where do the people you think stand on this? He said their basic mandate is going to be ignore it. Abrazos, not balazos. Everybody's happy. Nothing's happening. But the people in Mexico, do they believe that shit? They don't believe that shit. They seeing it outside their door. They're seeing it when the guy that they was going to vote for is smoked or the dude that, that was going to run for office that lives up the block got smoked. They're seeing it. You know what I'm saying? But are they like, it's all good? We're taken care of. I don't know. I'm not there. I, I'm watching. I'm watching uh, a country under siege by their own, by the politicians and the cartels, which uh, have become one and the same, from what it sounds like. Abrazo no balazos is the policy, hmm. and saying that nothing is wrong is probably kind of like the main directive that the current government has. Mm -hmm. And she looks like somebody's going to basically continue on this policy. So um, business as usual. Okay. So it's good times ahead for the cartels. You think it's going to be business as usual, more or less? For, for a few organizations, it's probably going to be business as usual. Some of the classic standouts uh, of the Sinaloa Confederation are probably going to be business as usual. Um, you also see a growing... Um, one of the first people to congratulate uh, Shane Mom on her victory was uh, Xi Jinping. <laughs> so mm. China's very much betting on this uh, this victory as a way into Mexico as far as manufacturing. Mm. Um, so it's, 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 it's a celebrated victory in a lot of ways, uh, mostly because of the influence that is being now kind of showcased uh, publicly as far as outside influence and internal mm. cartel influence in some of these political uh, events in Mexico. Mexico's important. This Chinese-Mexico con co connection runs deep. We keep hearing about it again. Don't forget, Oso put us up on the story the other day where they, they locking up people between the Chinese-Mexican connection. We've heard about the Chinese-Mexican connection uh, in the twin story. We was going through the origins of cartel and all of that. So the president's like, yeah, we got us a president in Mexico. We on and we pop. People are coming to kind of showcase uh, publicly as far as outside influence and internal mm -hmm. cartel influence in some of these political uh, events in Mexico. Mexico's important. Mm -hmm. And people are coming to realize the potential of Mexico as the next China. So if, if the what I don't understand is if the uh, current administration and the incubate uh, uh, shine bomb are favorable to the legacy cartel, specifically Sinaloa, let's say, uh, why are all of these political assassinations happening then? Because there's other, there's a larger cartel growing in influence, and a few, a few of them. But the main one, this, the the cartel de Jalisco de Nueva Generación, uh, the new generation cartel, is a growing uh, influence and power in Mexico. Uh, it's it's overtaking the the law cartel as far as territory mm -hmm. uh, in the past, and now it's probably going to overtake them in political influence. I think they 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 already got that page out of that playbook, and they got that page probably, you know pretty recently, maybe five, six years ago, this, this phenomenon started kind of like really uh, taking an uptick. And you can directly see a relationship between the Sinaloa cartel and the new generation cartel's conflict on the outside, as far as like basically them going after the, each other's territory. And also the political violence and assassinations are basically at the same time mm. start happening. Once these two large organizations start competing for control over territories, um, you could see that each of them have their own candidates, so they were politicized. Mm -hmm. um, so when political assassinations happen, they're essentially uh, a proxy hit against a rival cartel. In a way, yeah. I mean, you have. I mean, you have. You have the current. Just think of them as two different countries. You know what I'm saying? It's it's a fixed fight. It's the Iran Contra affair. You know what I'm saying? That you have to sway. Which side wins this political election? Who's helping who? You got Sinaloa versus Jalisco. Well, I got to smoke your alderman. Well, I got to get your congressman then. 
current the current uh, the current feeling in Mexico is that the, the Morena party is unstoppable. I mean, they won by a large majority in most of the places that they uh, they competed, and a lot of the assassinations were targeted at their candidates. So we can assume that there's a cartel out there that doesn't want their people in. Mm-hmm. Uh, same phenomenon that happens with corrupt uh, corrupt cops and corrupt uh, institutions with corrupt leadership in them. Mm. You know, you corrupt one member of that institution, and now you can control things that happen on the streets through him. My my cartel rivals will assassinate my guy. That's what mm. happens within police forces and some uh, uh, and some uh, government institutions. Now it's happening at a high level mm. as far and, as politics in Mexico. And now is the goal of that to get the candidates? Or, or the politicians to then come work for you. In other words, if I kill a mayor in a city in Michoacan, well, where it looks like it looks like a lot of the violence uh, was happening, is that in it to to say, hey, you don't work for Sinaloa anymore. You work for Jalisco. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 like, oh, this guy looks like he's going to win. Let's kill this guy, <laughs> and let's okay. see if let, let's see if we can afford the other guy that's going to that's going to be the one to place him. Because everybody that runs in Mexico has a suplente, is what's called. Basically, your running mate. You know, mm. if something happens to you, you get you know the other guy gets replaced. And yeah. there's a and seventy nine percent chance that something's gonna happen to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Some of the high level agreements with some of these criminal organizations happens with happens with the main candidate. The suplente is like a guy; it's a forgotten guy in the back room. So if you know you're on a budget and you want to have some cartel influence in a certain region of Mexico, you know, and you can't afford the main candidate, you kill him and you pay off the other dude. And, the and now sup- the other dude also has a visual live lesson of what happens if you. <laughs> play ball right and there's a good chance that the suplente will say hey you know what i I, i'm not married to the sinaloa i'll go with you guys i mean mean, in some cases that's what's happened in other cases it's uh just basically oh that's the uh sinaloa cartel candidate Mm -hmm. right just just because he's 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 an exposed uh element of an organization you know Mm -hmm. public exposed and an element of an organization you might not be able to get to them because they're hiding or they're in their territories. But I get your boy. But you see their money behind a candidate, so viable target. While well, Sinaloa sitting around thinking, I'm going to get this dude in office, everything's going to be just fine, I'm going to use him for this, this, that, and the other. Next thing you know, he's plugged, and it's over with. They just disappear him off the face of the fucking planet. Where were the majority of these assassinations taking place, in your estimation? I mean... Interestingly enough, in a lot of the contested territories of some of these cartel organizations, uh, some of them <laughs> happen in Mexico uh, proper, Mexico City, uh, in the area of Mexico City, mm-hmm. uh, Michoacan, as you mentioned, which is a contested area right now. I mean, it's it's been going through basically trench warfare for the past five, six years. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's where the uprisings of these armed movements of civilians happened in the past that were uh, showed on Netflix and their various documentaries. It's a hot zone of activity, and, and it's a very important place for a lot of reasons. Mm. Um, one of the reasons is, uh, you know, Americans and their avocado toast and, and all of the uh, and all of the avocados that grow in that region and the money that goes in and out of that place. If anybody's ever bought, asked for extra guac uh, at Chipotle, you've been putting money in one of one of a few cartel organizations out there. Love Not the aguacate. Y'all corrupted the fucking aguacate too? Damn it, man. We can't even have avocados that ain't corrupted. I'm sitting here serving up my avocado dollars to the cartel too. This is outrageous, boy. This is outrageous. They got their hands in everything from your BBL to your to your aguacate to your guacamole, it's a wrap. Maybe, Damn. maybe the maybe the new generation cartel that runs uh, that is now kind of gaining influence in that area. But most of these places where these political organ uh, political assassinations have, have taken place, you can directly link to places that are contested as far as control over a territory. Mm. And you're referring to, of course, the extortion of the avocado industry uh, in Michoacan. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's one, that's some giant industry, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of money there, a lot of American money. I, I think there was a mm-hmm. boycott for a bit, but uh, the, the, it's uh, the, it's gold. It's green gold. Mm-hmm. And again, it's one of those examples of uh, of these cartels diversifying, going into regular industry, mm-hmm. and, and or extorting. I mean, again, extortion is one way. Ownership is another. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't hear a lot, uh, we don't hear a lot about these groups coming in and basically making you sell them your land and or just signing it over. 
Mm -hmm. That's not extortion. That's a very quiet way of basically buying into regular business. And, and you know, so focusing on, on the avocado industry for a second, what does uh, killing a political candidate in one of these zones in Michoacan, what does uh, that do to further uh, a cartel's interest in, say, the avocado industry? I mean, if you have control over a town mayor, you have eyes and ears now, uh, and you now you have a whole armed institution where the poli municipal police are, is now on your, you know, mm. now they're your guys. Yeah. Um, they have you have eyes and ears all over the area now. Uh, now you have um, you ways of extorting and not Favors extorting, of calling. robbing the government blind of its funds by you know having competitions for different contracts as far as government contracts, and now you have your cartel. Uh, ghost companies, shell companies uh, competing for some of these uh, things. So it's it's not just the influence and the power behind it and having control over a, a region because you know you have the political candidates there. Healthy fats ain't even safe. That's some bullshit. Upper Echelon said, uh, Shai, put it this way. If you eat cucumbers, lettuce, tomatoes, avocados, cilantro, chances are they come from El Mayo or some other rug lord. No more lechuga, tomates, avocados are over now cilantro's gone too like come on man they own the cows that make the burgers that we put these ingredients on top of what fuck? i just said what i missed you what you missed is that avocados have been co-opted and not even avocados not even healthy fat is safe from the clutch of crime that's what you missed ivan it's a sad day nah so that's it so i now i got a reason to not eat salads man appreciate it man them salads. Upper echelon said, I mean, they're my enemies right now, but I still su support them and eat avocados and tomatoes and everything else. Sleeping with the enemy, man. It just be like that. Unless you want to skip all of that and we go straight pizzas and all that shit. You know? But somewhere down the line, there's a cow farm that put that pepperoni on there, so it's all corrupted. I even said limes and bananas come from the cartel. Don't ask how I know. And not only that, that's in those countries. Imagine the stuff we get from, that, that's Mexico. Imagine the stuff we get from other places. Who knows what kind of labor that's coming from. Oh, no, but they compromised the mangoes, too. It's a wrap, man. There's nothing to believe in in life. Everything is bullshit. If a new highway is get needs getting paved or built in, you know, a city in Guerrero, right? Uh, that's the cartel is probably going to get that bid if they own that mayor or that governor or whoever's earmarking those funds. Or whoever the cartel wants to get that bid. It could be one of their companies. It could be a company that they're extorting. You know, right. it could be, you know, it's complex. Um, the the means and ways that these organizations make money is not just, hey, we cross drugs into the United States and we get the cash back and we wear pointy boots and big hats and chains. Mm. That is an image of the cartels that is vintage. That's right. like a, that's like a, a 30, 30, 40 year old image now, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, these guys are diversified. Um, these guys are trying to figure out ways and inroads into telecommunications. I mean, mm -hmm. they took apart a whole telecommunication system that they had already set up uh, a few times uh, across Mexico. Um, they're, they're that's that network that they were talking about that Chapo had, the telephone network. So who's Dan Sosa? Where do Puerto Ricans lechon come from? Somebody check on the lechon. I'm not giving my shit up, man. Interested in sea lanes. They're interested in starting building ports. They, they would be, what would be better, paying off a port authority <laughs> or building your own port? Right. So they want to build a port uh, to import chemicals from China to make fentanyl, but they're gonna also going to build, their company is going to build the port their company, yeah, their electrical it's called vertical company, is going to power the port. It's called owning the process from the top to the bottom. Their cement company is going to sell the cement to the construction company. And so now you've yeah. just diversified and your your streams of income are now 10 x And only one of them yeah. is illegal, right? Yep. Yeah. I mean, the Sinaloa cartel got, I mean, elements of the Sinaloa cartel historically have done, have done all of this work already. Mm. Other organizations that are getting to the same size as it are now doing the same. And that's where you're seeing this mm -hmm. people of violence. Now, people are aware of this now. And it's kind of in the open in a lot of ways. I mean, you know, uh, the, the, the president, El Presidente Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador goes to La Lagunilla. Uh, La Lagunilla uh, uh, goes to El Chapo's hometown of uh, La Tuna. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the, the, his, uh, his uh, 
Bandira Wata, I mean. Um, and uh, for the funeral of El Chapo Guzman, he closed off the federal airspace over that area. So he could have a, wow. they could have a nice funeral for for for, for his mom. Now, um, Ed, how does that, how does that contradict? How does this, um, this new look, this this new uh, modus operandi, if you will, of Mexican criminal organizations, right? The way that they have completely uh, embedded themselves into legitimate uh, society. Right into into uh, the, the legitimate economy, right to where it's like imperceptible, almost. Yeah. How does that contradict with the, Mexico's growth? Like the GDP, it grew eighteen percent last year. Uh, well, so, it, so how, how do these two things? How okay, are these two okay, things related um, going forward? Sure. I, I, so it's 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 insane to think that in a country like Mexico, with all the violence and all the people, the numbers are skewed. By the way, all official numbers as far as people dying and disappearing in Mexico are completely. A lot of those are skewed. Ask me how are I they know, down? I used to work for the government. Uh, are they downplayed? <laughs> yeah, they're yeah they're downplayed. You know, somebody going missing, they're missing. There's a reason why some of these federal organizations uh, are, go after some so of them. So the crazy numbers that we're already looking at as as crazy, they're downplayed. There's a reason why some of these federal organizations uh, are, go after some of the mothers that are looking for their missing uh, sons and, and daughters and stuff like that. Go out looking for cadavers. They're they're actively being blocked by federal officials now. They don't they don't want them to find anybody because the numbers going to change. Right. Um, this is that's just some diabolical shit. Like we we make up these things. We listen in. We listen to people talk crazy, right? Oh, they're doing this to the babies and they're doing it. The diabolical shit is happening out loud and on paper and in front of everybody. That's diabolical. You're a family. You're looking for your loved one that's lost. You know kind of why. You know why. You don't have no question, but you're just looking. And now they're going to block you from looking. Now they're going to block you from speaking. Now they're going to block you from being heard. Then the president's going to ignore and to act like he don't hear you and say, let's go to lunch. That shit was disgusting when I saw that shit. But that's cabal shit right there. You don't have to see them sacrificing the animal to know that they're doing it. Just got to see the blood on their hands. Shit. You have a country with that going on and all the violence. Yeah, there's some good parts of the country, but Mexico really is like four or five countries in one. We have central Mexico, which is our New York, California type people, woke, leftist, all the trans uh, pronouns and stuff like that. Uh, legislation started in Mexico City proper. Mm -hmm. So that's our that's our New York and California, I guess. Uh -huh. um, you have northern Mexico, which is a lot of the industry, uh, Baja, Monterrey, uh, a lot of the plugs that go directly into the United States and all of, all of that, you know? Uh, and then you have rural parts of Mexico um, um, that are kind of forgotten and uh, that kind of do their own thing on the coast. And then you have the jungle parts of Mexico, which are people really forgotten, like Oaxaca and Chiapas, mm. right? So these are the three, uh, these five parts of Mexico. The industrial side of it, the northern part of Mexico is basically with open arms waiting for all of the exiting manufacturing capabilities of China because people don't want to invest in China anymore and want to make anything in China mm -hmm. because of everything that entails. And also because of the economy, China's going to the toilet. Um, and, we're, and all of the manufacturing is moving to where, where else? Mexico. Mm -hmm. This is the next China. That's why you're seeing such a stable currency mm -hmm. and that's why you're seeing a lot of people investing in in, in mexico and that's why you saw xi jinping uh being one of the first people to congratulate claudia on her victory it's probably related to the fact that he wants to make his electric vehicles in mexico to get around the tariffs that's probably his that's probably the, their objective with that i guess um uh, because uh, I mean, I think that's where that's where we're moving. They 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 tried to make a Tesla plant, uh, a Tesla building plant uh, in in Monterey that kind of went through, and it was a whole big deal just for one plant. Uh, now there's rumblings of four from wow. China, wow. and they're not going to have the same issues with like we have to have these uh, uh, ambiental standards built into this. Mm -hmm. Like they're not going to give a shit about it. So it's the U.S. applying tariffs is. 
China trying to get past them tariffs, building a relationship with Mexico to do that over there. It's just a, a worldwide game of greed. So, so um, with uh, with the, the coming prosperity that's that's coming to certain parts of Mexico, right? The manufacturing hub, the financial center in Mexico City, because those are linked, right? Um, yeah. You know, with this coming up, it's it's safe to say that. Well, is it safe to say that uh, cartels are actually going to be a thing of the past in terms of these uh, iconic kingpin figures, Chapo? Mencho, like, don't you? Because Mexico's got a vested interest in trying to not eliminate crime, not eliminate cartels, but to to bury them from uh, you know the rest of the world, right? I mean, the Mexican people have that wish, but probably the federal and and, and politics do, doesn't. Hell I guess no. That's uh, exactly what the question that I posed at the beginning of this live stream. You know what I'm saying? And he said it. That would be a hope for the Mexican people. Because they know that they're being choked out. There's a giant swath of industry in Mexico and people that live off the money that the United States sends down to Mexico to pay for the war on drugs, for example. Uh, you want to talk about cartels that nobody talks about, Ford Motor Company, nine, uh, 511 Tactical Gear, <laughs> which make millions off the drug war in Mexico. Mm. Um, the United States, through a thing called Plan Medi, that's, uh, Plan Medi which is a bilateral uh, agreement with Mexico as far as it basically sending money down to Mexico so they can do the fighting for us is mm. kind of the idea. That money has been going down there for years and the problem's getting bigger. I mean, it's not getting any better. Um, you can see, I mean, in a lot of ways, and, and this is not me just theorizing on this, there, there's there been many uh, document leaks from the current uh, administration's uh, Sedena, which is our, our army, our, the military in Me the military industrial complex in Mexico, uh, where you can clearly see that they know that certain politicians in certain regions of Mexico are working for one cartel or the other. Their, their, intelligence, organ their intelligence apparatus tells them that. So like, hey, if you're going to go and do patrolling in this region, yeah, don't tell the local authorities because they're, they're not going to, they're not going to help you because they work for the cartels, right? So, mm. So they themselves are clearly uh, stating that everybody has a side. Everybody's trying to figure out who's going to come up on top. And everybody's mm -hmm. basically vying for power or, or aligning themselves as far as who they're going to be working for in the future to see who's going to win this war. So you, that's so you do think that if Mexico reaches the industrial capacity of China in like the 1990s or the mid 2000s, right, when it was the fastest growing economy in the world. It was their heyday, right? You think that that the corruption and the violence and the criminal, the criminally run state that is Mexico can exist alongside five Tesla factories in Monterrey, this this modern industrial. You think both of those things can exist in parallel? I don't, I don't, I don't see I don't see how I mean, I, I don't I, I mean, I I remember talking to some people that were involved in some of the negotiation for Tesla. Like I do, I do security consulting a lot. So every now and then I get called with questions about that type of stuff. And uh, one of the things that they were kind of worried about, and these people have worked in a lot of parts of the world, including China, uh, they were worried about paid, paid protection and extortion, which is a, a field that they had no idea how to deal with uh, realistically. Um, right, they need an extortion department in their, in their HR. So I, I don't I don't see this working long term. Um, a lot of these plants moving down there are going to basically create an opportunity for people and um, people that are already working down in Mexico won't, won't will know this already. There's no way of working in Mexico without realizing that there's two authorities here: the government and the other government. Mm -hmm. <laughs> La Maña, La Mano Peluda, or whatever you want to call them. Mm -hmm. They have different names, you know, there's different nicknames to kind of refer to them. Um, but in a lot of ways... Yeah, the Rockefellers, the Clintons. Now you have institutions, and this has happened to some of the clients that I've had, where they're like, hey, yeah, a guy came here, tried to extort money from us, and he get, gave us a phone, and we talked to this guy, he said, arrange payments and stuff like that, so we gave all that to the cops. And then we had another call from the same people. It's like, hey, I know you called so and so at the cops. Yeah, he works for us. It's so like, what the f are you doing? I think Mexico is going to be the place to live in a few years. 
It's not getting better than U.S. either. Yeah, I agree. But when we start hearing about 40, 50 aldermen and shit like that getting unalived, because they, you know what I'm saying? That, that's, we in that same, now it's a little bit different here. And we're, we're getting pressed in different ways. You know what I'm saying? Over there, you playing with your life. If you, if you try to get a job, we having shootouts in the streets, people getting jacked, Kia boys, and it goes all the way upstairs to the White House, and it goes all the way to espionage, and it goes all through the CIA, and it goes all through everybody. It's just all the same crook stepping on the poor man's neck. Again, the poor people in the United States also have their hopes. They hope for a certain thing too. They're not going to get it. Why? Because we have our polit our politicians and our cartels. Our cartels happen to be, uh, you know, special interest groups and uh, hedge funds and shit, you know, stepping on our necks. So we'll see how that goes. This is this is the nature of it. Um, so could that happen? Like, could Tesla ha have to pay the piper? Could they end up having to pay extortion? To whoever Many is controlling American companies that work openly in Mexico through industry have paid extortion money and paid protection money and are currently. That's right. a whole industry and it's a whole other money making aspect of the cartels. Wow. So so an American company, are they paying the cops? Are the cops the intermediaries? Or are they paying the cartel it guys? It depends directly? on where you are. It depends on where you are. I mean, you, you might show up someplace, and again, I can't talk about some of these things, the specifics uh, about some of these uh, jobs that I've been on. But uh, American plant, uh, old company, moves to Mexico, sets up shop. Uh, they bought the company in parts. People were already there working, and they had an issue with uh, things, um, valuable p parts that they were making were walking off, right? So um, they hired, they changed security, mm -hmm. and still, the, still, it's still happening. Um, they put cameras up, still happening. They called me, and I went in there and like looked around and talked to everybody, and um, I told the guy like, "You bought this company. Uh, who's the managerial aspect of it? Oh, these guys up here, they're like, they're known in the community. They, they're the fixers. They know everybody. These are the guys. Okay." Yeah, that, that, those are intermediaries for the cartels. Those guys are connected <laughs> with somebody from the outside, and they're basically right. taxing you. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? I mean, they, they, you're being robbed from within. Okay, so fire those guys. Get another. They cut. They get a call. You hire them back. Wow. <laughs> or else. Wow. You know. so, so you think? Uh, so you actually think that this strategy of nearshoring, right? Instead of sending your manufacturing to China send it to Mexico. You Mexico. actually, you don't think it's gonna, uh, you don't think it's gonna last long term. I think two, there's two things that are gonna go on. One, if Trump wins, he's aware of this loophole that the Chinese are trying to exploit, and he's gonna just tear off the shit out of everything. Mm. Um, so it's gonna, not gonna, it's not gonna do anything long term. I, that, that's what I think, I, I don't know. Um, but- uh, He said Trumpito got an answer for this shit. Uh, you are seeing now a growing uh, incursion as far as like m Chinese money business at, coming into Mexico, and they realize quickly that they can't be too open and upfront about it. So what they what are they, what they are doing is they're investing in Mexican companies, gaining ownership, stock, and all that stuff, uh, and all that as far as control controlling uh, decision power in some mm -hmm. of these Mexican companies, and setting up in Mexico. Uh, or other international companies. I mean, they bought up Canadian companies in the past to kind of hide some of their dealings as far as mining mm -hmm. like that in Mexico. Uh, when the uh, giant lithium deposits were found in uh, Sonora, uh, the Chinese were using a Canadian mining company to kind of buy into some of those rights. And mm -hmm. the Americans kind of figured some of that out and blocked it, I guess. Uh, do you, do but you, uh, Do you know what's going on in Chiapas? I've heard that Chinese companies <laughs> are working to try to buy buy out indigenous land that's full of minerals underneath it and in doing so they are employing local uh or even the super cartels right depends on who they're connected with to then massacre the uh, the landowners to get them to uh, sell so that the chinese the companies can take over is there are there any veracity if, to those claims yes and if people don't think there is any veracity over those claims i would say rewind back the time the clock a little bit uh, we saw these uh, documentaries on Netflix about all these um, Mexican townspeople 
raising up in arms and wearing white t-shirts. Uh, people thought that was like they were that was like some sort of uprising. Uh, what I heard and what I realized later on is it was an illegal uh, iron ore uh, mining operation by the Chinese in the area, a few of them. And they were actually paying some of these armed groups to be protection to keep people away. So mm. the Chinese is mining iron ore, iron ore in Mexico. What? Mm. Uh, it's been done in the past in Mexico and recent past. And it's probably being done again, specifically with a friendly, open government towards uh, the Chinese uh, right now. And it's going to get even a bit a bit it's going to be even a bit a bit stronger as we move forward so the cartels don't mind the chinese incursion into mexico one of them doesn't one of them specifically i think has like all of the interest for uh, uh, all of the support on that side i mean the new, the new generation cartel seems to have some sort of uh, relationship on that, or favoritism i guess i don't know uh it seems to grow more uh, on the Pacific side, where it has access to those ports, than the other side of the country, which makes me think that you know something's going on. Also, during the COVID epidemic, it's one of the it's one of the only cartels that maintains their capacity to infuse fentanyl into their product, mm -hmm. while the Sinaloa Cartel Federation was um, exporting fentanyl from the U.S. into Mexico to load their drugs and then put them up. A backup. Uh, there was a there was a case in San Diego. I think they caught a giant load of fentanyl was coming from San Diego. Everybody down on the screen got one nostril wow. bigger than the other. So you can see there that they have logistical support, at least of some Wonder sort, of some sort of a favoritism or some sort of support of some kind. So if, I mean, if not stupid. so, sounds like Jalisco then has the Nuevo Jalisco has the the bigger plug with China. Then if they're able to keep the fentanyl rolling even during the pandemic. And, and you're seeing the influence Alonzo of the Alonzo 5150 just subscribed on YouTube. Like we we saw a violent uprising in the Chapas and the Chapas Oaxaca border area, um, where you saw members of El Mayo Zambada's historical leader of the Sinaloa cartel, uh, a, a, a lot of his armed gunmen basically drive down to the border. Which is kind of think about this. Um, Mexico is a country that has armed gunships and a whole military that you've seen their you've seen their operations you've seen what they can do I mean the last Culiacanazo you saw what they could do uh somehow an, uh, it's crazy that he has to say that he has to make sure to be clear between the first Culiacanazo and the last Culiacanazo which I need to find a video what that's like a compilation compilation of all I can see of both of those. If anybody uh, runs into a video like that, let me know. Multi-vehicle convoy with artillery on top of the it technicals. Look it up. Drove across the country from Sinaloa Control Territory all the way down to the border, the southern border to fight uh, these members of the New Generation Cartel, basically trying to take control of some of these towns. And they were received with applause, mm. right? So something's clearly happening as far as influence and control of, of of the region you see with the Sinaloa cartel they weren't stopped by the by the military so they probably have some sort of open line of communication is what what you could see mm. and you see a new generation cartel that is the one that's constantly getting harassed by the government constantly getting high level uh events as far as captures and mm. pressure so you you can see something going on as far as uh, as far as uh, sides and um, and and an influence as far as who's doing what. But you also um, see, you know, the as you said, you see the Sinaloa cartel weakened and and yeah. their heads are shrinking. Their uh, their figureheads keep getting knocked off. So again, yeah. you again, it's all a game, right? Like they have to feed the Americans, you know, some targets um every now and then just to keep the base yeah. fed and just to keep the appearance up um but it does make me wonder like can this duality as i said before can asu graduates take pictures with bottles of tequila sitting on donkeys in cabo while in guerrero uh and chiapas scores of people are massacred and nobody gets arrested, nobody goes to jail, and new factories from so-called legitimate 
Chinese and American companies are set up to make goods for the U.S. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's been going this long, and the game seems yeah. to be working, at least for I the powers coming, that be. I think, we're, I think we're coming to a head pretty soon. Uh, one of the only bilateral uh, efforts uh, that we've seen as far as politics currently, and this has been a very divisive time for the United States, has been border issues. And another one has been legislation and talks about naming some of these criminal organizations south of the border as terrorist organizations to unleash the military on them. Uh, three years uh, three years ago, I predicted that we were going to see some sort of uh, unleashing military Unleashing the military on them is unleashing the military on the Mexican people as well. Like, I don't know about all that shit. Mexico. That we were going to see some sort of uh, military intervention in Mexico by the United States. And this is before the talk of Trump t speaking of this, naming them terrorist organizations, stuff like that was, was, uh, went on. Um, so you could, that's where I think where we're headed. There's because, I mean, we have an open antagonist as far as the current, uh, federal administration in Mexico. Um, mm -hmm. uh, AMLO, the current president has been very vocal and very open in his disdain for the United States as a as a as a country mm -hmm. right um and he's basically been a mouthpiece for uh anti-american sentiment across uh, the americas uh so you you have you have that going on on one end and on the other end you have this current uh lady that just won the elections uh, uh culturally jewish i mean she 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 says she's an atheist um she shows up to political rallies with a crucifix and you know, she she keeps up appearances because <laughs> Mexico is a very Catholic country. Yeah. You know, and she's a politician, so that's you know whatever. But she's also a Rockefeller Foundation there lady. It is. And she went to Berkeley. She's a scientist. Um, the Soros Foundation funded a bunch of uh, media companies in Mexico, and the, you could see the favoritism as far as the coverage through some of these campaigns. Mm -hmm. So it's it's odd, man. It's this is this is a, I've been trying to kind of piece it out and piece it all through. Uh, as a candidate, she makes sense. I mean, she's very much a true believer as far as the current president. She, she was she was with him since the start, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but she's a different animal as far as the the, the, the way she the, her background and how she's kind of uh, kind of approaching things. And in none of her political uh, speeches and none of the stuff that she's planning to do, do you hear anything about? Uh, Fighting the cartels or fentanyl or mm. organized crime or no, all of this stuff. Silent. It's like a non subject. What? She's talking about uh, women's rights and pronouns and oh, progressive no. stuff and all this. Like, it's like some weird out of sight, out of mind policy, I guess. Fascinating. Talking a bunch so of it was shit like America that don't eight years Mexico ago. Right now. Yeah. Policy, I guess. Fascinating. So and it was like America eight years ago. Yeah. So what if That's, Trump gets in here? What if what what does that do? Is it, what kind of conflict does that create? Because there's this if he gets in, there's this huge demand for border crackdown. A of the migrants. That's the most important thing. B of fentanyl. So how does yeah. the leftist government in Mexico that doesn't seem to want to even talk about stopping that stuff? How does that? come into conflict and will the new mexican government be forced uh to take some action if they want to continue receiving security funding from the u.s i think uh i think in the end the one that the the the, the i mean it's a perfect storm i mean Me the united states isn't going through a an easy time right now as well mm -hmm. and you know when uh when the economy gets low you know the u.s usually you know, likes to go around kicking bee beehives. Um, it's 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 not it's not a judgmental thing. I, I, that's that's the way the U.S. has been in the past. And uh, you look around at the conflicts in the world that could probably spark up, and the U.S. involvement in them. And you you, you look at Israel, and I don't think that's going to be it. Um, the Russians are kind of going back and forth over there, and I don't, I don't I don't envision the U.S. sending people to the Ukraine. But Mexico. That's pretty close. <laughs> That's pretty close. Do you uh, actually, are you just saying that? Or you actually think that the U.S. could send special forces 
into Mexico to, to combat this situation? I, mean, I, I, I not only say that, I, I mean, I've, I've spoken to Congress about these issues. So I know that this is very much on the on both sides of the aisle. Do you that's ad- very much on their mind. Do you advise them that that's a good idea? <laughs> no, I advise them that's a horrible idea. Um, the, ima- the humanitarian, uh, w- the wave of humanity that it's going to create is going to be completely unstoppable. I mean, there's no, you can line up every single Marine you have in Pendleton on the border. They're going to still, <laughs> the, that wave is going to be like nothing in history. Either you make that border fence irrelevant with, with, an, with an armed incursion into Mexico, or you now have a new Puerto Rico. That's the, those are the only two outcomes. Wait, you know, what? Wave of oh. huma- the hum- are you just saying that? Or you actually think that the U.S. could send special forces into Mexico to, to combat this I situation? Mean, I, I, I not only say that, I, I mean, I've, I've spoken to Congress about these issues. So I know that this is very much on the on both sides of the aisle. Do you that's ad- very much on their mind. Do you advise them that that's a good idea? <laughs> no, I advise them that's a horrible idea. Um, the, ima- the humanitarian, uh, w- the wave of humanity that it's going to create is going to be completely unstoppable. I mean, there's no, you can line up every single Marine you have in Pendleton on the border. They're going to still, the, that wave is going to be like nothing in history. Either you make that border fence irrelevant with, with, an, with an armed incursion into Mexico, or you now have a new Puerto Rico. That's the, those are the only two outcomes. Also said the USA will turn Mexico into a commonwealth like Puerto Rico. Is that what he's saying? So basically they'll come colonize is what you're saying. But he's saying the, the, the wave of humanity. What you mean the wave of humanity? The pushback? So you can put all your Marines on the border. Okay. So what's the difference if we send the whole army? He's, he's saying either come with the whole shit. Don't send no little, you know, Navy SEALs in here to try to do shit. Come with it or don't come at all. That's basically what I think he's saying, but I don't fucking know. Yeah, I don't think they'll do shit. I think the most they could do is try to do what they did with the Contras, you know, give support to whoever they want to win and shit like that. Pick a dog in the in the fight, but I don't see them doing no no other shit.